Okay, right, so carrying on from what I just said there, I'm going through each movement of the angular transform, covering every little difference between a posture. So some postures we'll just be going through because there's no differences. But every posture where there's a difference, whether it be a basic difference to an advanced difference, or just different ways of doing the posture, just so that, especially for our instructors, they can know which ways are valid ways and which ways are not valid ways. Uh, also, for any students who want to buy this DVD, they can know if their teacher's doing it wrong or not. Okay, so we're just going to start from scratch, from the very beginning of the form, because I want to try to get through the whole form in three hours, and get it all onto one DVD as well. So, I'm first just going to go through up until pump. Okay, opening posture. There's really only two ways of doing this. Very basic way, just move your arms. Simple. Now, I'm not teaching that, I'm just showing it, because you should know how to do it from the MTG2 tape or something. Uh, the only real difference from that is the more advanced way of doing it, where we have the rolling, and that's always simply from right heel to right toe to left toe to left heel, a counterclockwise circle. And there's a slight right turn slight left turn, and of course by doing that your left hand will be leading the movement. I'm also not going into so much detail, obviously certain postures will be different depending on your level purely because of the size of the movement. So this is basic form, if you're just teaching stark beginners with no body movement, and then you can start putting this in. And of course, depending on who you're teaching, you can just make up your own thing out of that. So sometimes I might just say, okay, just roll your weight forward slightly, first of all. Then I'll say, turn your waist and roll your weight forward. And if they do that, I'll naturally start doing this circular thing. So you can make up your own little ways, but basically, that's basic form, and that with the roll. And it can come smaller and smaller as we advance. So there's only two things with that one. Lot, no, arm left, whatever it's called, basic form. There's really only two differences with this posture as well. That's basic form, obviously, yin and yang. It's the same difference as the first one. As we come up, we have this rolling into the left, uh, the right toe. More of an intent on a forward movement out here rather than a flat arm movement. So that's the only real difference. So you'll know that from whichever tape you're learning it from. This is how we do it properly. And the palms are more like this as opposed to flat there, like this. So there are the only differences there. One and two. Coming down to block right. What you've got to be careful of is this posture. I'll do a couple of corrections while we're going through as well. What people get confused here is because they're doing this left and right weight change. What a lot of people tend to do is they go to the right leg, but then because you do do this, there is that element in that you're going from the right leg over to the left and then back into the right. A lot of people get into like Chang Fu form, going over to the left and now moving to the right, which is incorrect. What you must do is, as you move into the right, uh, sorry, into the left leg, you're still turning to the left. If I turn to the right, Meaning this posture, I must be moving this way. So there must be no motion where you're sinking into the left leg. As soon as you start to sink your weight into the squat, you must be moving into this leg. So that's still like basic form of Yang Lu Chan's form, straight into the right leg, as opposed to the Yang Chen Fu's form, where we sink into the left leg. So you must always be straight into the right leg. Okay, this posture here. The only difference is with the structure of that posture is that very basic form, it is okay just to teach that with a yin palm as on MTG2, but of course, technically, the right hand should flex to a yang set. But there's no real other differences with that. Now here's where we've got a couple of differences with the step forward. Can I ask you a question? Are you lining the wrists or palms? Are there two versions? Wrists and arms. Palms. Uh, yeah, no, that's, yeah, definitely palms. One palm on top of the other with that posture, as opposed to wrists crossed like that. So you're just there. Now, that opening sequence when we do the, the bow is round and then right and left. What? In the opening sequence and right yeah. and left. 
This one? Yeah, you, you just go through the way we do it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, the way that we want to do it, still large frame, but... So the left hand is leading the whole movement. Yeah, Max. Yeah. Okay, so that's how we want to do it. Basic form, though, would just be up, down, around, to there, to there. Or you could even, yeah, very basic form. You can sometimes teach if they're having too much difficulty to do that. But it should be a yang palm. Okay, basic form. As you step, nothing happens. You simply place the heel down. So everything just holds posture, place the heel, and move forward. That's basic form. A little bit more advanced after that, you simply change the state of the hands as you step. So then when you come forward, you have a further change of the hands. So that's sort of the second level up for that movement. The most advanced way of doing that movement, there's an empty move on the end of this posture, and then the change of state. So you're effectively getting two change of hands. So I'm getting from here, the left hand continues out from that hinge block, like it's pumping out this way. It rolls back into an eye strike, the left, the right hand, then you step and change the state again. So you're effectively getting one, two, three. And on the third one is when you step. But it should never be done like that, of course. It simply comes down, there's your empty move, and there's your step. And that's how it should be done. So they're the only differences with that set of movements. From here, basic, medium, advanced, and then forward. Coming forward, there's no differences, that's just, just a standard way of doing the movement. Uh, the only thing I'll say about this posture, obviously, obviously that would be basic, just getting to the front, advanced, you have a little hip shake right and left with the yin and yang change of the hands. Now, on Tai Chi to the max, the way Dad's explaining it, it can be, I got confused when I was looking at it myself, it looks like the way he's explaining it, rather than that, because he's going into so much detail and he's trying to break it down piece for piece, he's saying that this hand goes yin as the hip pulls back to the right instead of going yang as the hip pulls back to the right. But if you just watch him do it afterwards when he's just into it, into the flow, it's always opening and then coming back. So regardless of how you see it or how you're confused of watching it or whatever, the hand is yin coming forward, this is yang. A little hiccup, when my hip pulls back to the right, the left hand goes yang, the right hand goes yin, and then back to standing. Just before the board off, the strike, the downward strike. Yeah. Um, I've seen it done first do the downward strike, then step, but I think you step and did the downward strike at the same time. From here? Yeah. As in, what you think it's strike, done like yeah. that step or something? Yeah, it's in, yeah, like. Yeah, I've seen it, yeah. Okay. I, I, it's not like that on any of the DVDs. Jerry's just saying that he's seen it done, uh, that we do the strike that way. And then, as you, so you're saying as you turn almost sort of back to front, the step's coming through. Yeah. Mm. Well, you don't quite, no, you don't quite, because that's in B and then to move. Yeah. You don't quite turn your belly right down to the front. There's, yeah, and then, uh, yeah. And then back, and yeah. then forward.